Hey everyone, today we're gonna to do a demo on TIG welding stainless steel weaves. What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Pacific Arc TIG Welding. My name's Dusty. To all the arc heads who watch the show every week, what's up, welcome back. I appreciate you returning as always. If you're new to the channel, I definitely encourage you to bounce back and check out a lot of the previous episodes. We do all kinds of things on this channel, but all things we do are TIG welding related. Probably my favorite thing to do is TIG welding art. I do two dimensional and three dimensional art pieces, all with stainless steel and aluminum TIG welding. I basically get to take all of the experience I've had with TIG welding over 18 years and learn to break the rules. I uh, make art pieces where I intentionally get different oxides to create different colors, and then I add paint, I add engraving, as well as TIG welding art pieces. Uh, I do TIG welding demos, TIG welding how Twos. I teach people how to do diff different joints, or at least the ways I do them at least. As well, on the channel, we do TIG welding gear reviews and gear breakdowns. And again, if you enjoy what you see, I really, really would appreciate it if you like, subscribe, and share. It helps my channel out quite a bit. I'm trying to grow my channel as big as possible. I appreciate it so much, thank you. So today, I wanted to make an episode that was a follow-up to an episode I did a few months back. The one a few months back was how to do a TIG welding weave with aluminum. So I'll put that link in the description below. It'll be right there. Uh, if you're keen to check it out, go watch it. I go over a bunch of theory as far as why I do a weave and in certain uh, situations. Uh, I'll explain a lot more of that stuff in that video below. So I'll kind of give like a recap version in this one, but I definitely encourage you jump back and watch that one first if you've not seen it already. But today I wanted to do the same thing, but I wanted to do it with stainless steel. So in my opinion, I find the stainless steel one a lot more difficult. Reason being is not only do we have to focus on the technique, the pattern, the size, the stepping, <laughs> everything that we learned about in the first video, but now we have to control our oxide to prevent uh, over coloring or over uh, oxidization with our TIG weld. Uh, again, with stainless steel, uh, I have many videos on this in the past where I explain what oxide is, why it forms on the surface. But what we're gonna do today is I'm just gonna go over a quick little setup as far as what I'm using, uh, and then we're gonna give it a whirl and see how it goes. So one quick thing I'll recap before we get into, uh, for anybody that's watching this one first, uh, is why we may use a weave pattern instead of just a straight bead pattern. So the reason that I like doing a weave pattern is basically when I have a weld path that is too wide to be covered by one single pass. So what a lot of people can do is you can set your machine up a little bit differently to increase the size of your stainless steel weld. I prefer not to do this. I will switch to a weave pattern. So a weave pattern will uh, widen the bead up quite a bit without having to really overheat the material with a really, really hot and really, really big bead. I can tend to cut the heat a little bit uh, and I just do a weave pattern. You cover a wider weld path and uh, again, without blowing anything up too hot, uh, it's definitely what I prefer to use it for. There's a lot of different uses. Uh, people use weaves. A lot of people use weaves as uh, caps. So they'll go over a root joint with a cap, with a weave. They look awesome. A lot of people are super, super good at it. But that's the main reason that I like doing it. There's many different variations of weave. You can see people uh, with my art pieces. I'll do weaves as wide as three or four steps sometime. So what I mean by that is I will be stepping one, two, three, four beads down, one, two, three, four beads down, one, two, three, four. I'll do three step is another common one I'll do. Uh, I prefer to just keep it as a two step when I'm actually doing a TIG welding project, uh, not my art pieces. My art pieces, I can do whatever I want because it's art. But uh, when, I'm, when I'm working on a project uh, in my shop here or at my job or whatever, I generally like to stick to a two-step. I find a two-step is pretty reasonable. Uh, you don't need to heat the piece up too much at that point. You're not pounding a whole bunch of filler rod into it. So I definitely prefer a two-step, but again, everybody has different uses for it. That's just mine. So the first thing I'd like to talk about here is something that I refer to as weld pattern. So weld pattern just refers, in my terminology, how the torch moves across your weave. This one here is probably the most common one that I see. I call this one the Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown stripe. Charlie Brown sweater stripe, you get it. But basically what this is gonna do is this is how a lot of people will do this one. A lot of people will start out as a dab on this part, a dab, and then they'll go diagonally up to the top again, dab, dab, diagonal, dab, dab, diagonal, dab, dab. Again, this is preference. I find that this diagonal movement tends to leave it a little bit disorganized. It also, in some circumstances, when people move too diagonal, it can leave a hollow point in the middle of your cap. So if you're ever running a wider cap on a, a weld joint or anything like that, you want things to be tightened up a little bit. I find generally from what I've taught people in the past, when people get into the diagonal movement, it tends to leave a little bit of a sinking spot in the middle. 
Again, this is just my preference, but what I like to do is something like this. Instead of working with the diagonal movements, we're only working with vertical and horizontal lines, or I guess when you're running it like this, it'll be uh, side to side and forward. So we're just running in basically square movements with the torch. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna change our technique a little bit with how we move across our pattern. We're gonna start out at the top. We're gonna dab up there, dab at the bottom, advance, go back up, dab, dab, advance, dab, dab, advance, dab, dab, advance. So again, I'll put a couple clips on screen right now. These are weaves I've done in the past. These weaves all have this pattern where all of the beads have just a square look to them. There is no diagonal motion. Uh, and that, that way you can tell exactly how much space you're putting in between each dab or each row of dabs. This is really important to me because I really can make sure at this point I don't have a hollow point in the middle of my uh, TIG cap or anything on a piece of pipe. That's very important to me. So again, that's just my preference. This is the pattern that I like doing. Uh, if you use something totally different, that's fine. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. This is just what I prefer to do. So before we get going, let's fire up the machine. I'll show you what I'm using for settings and then we'll show you uh, what I'm using for a torch setup. We'll run a bead and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so let's wake up the machine here. Wake up, you sleepy machine. There we go, just wait for the fan to turn off. So we are using the Canoweld 201 Pulse D. This machine is super dope. I use it every episode for the most part. It's so simple, it's just glorious. But uh, yeah, what we're using for settings today, we are on DC negative, obviously. Uh, for amperage, uh, running about 100 amps. Yeah, let's go with that. Again, I'm using the foot pedal, so that doesn't matter. I can just dictate that with the foot pedal. I have zero downslope. Uh, about six seconds of post flow. It's pretty good for stainless. A quick little pre-flow. No upslope, 100 amps, boom, there we go, pretty simple. So what I'm gonna be using for a torch setup here today is a CK Worldwide, thank you CK Worldwide. Uh, these torches are absolutely awesome, super simple. This is a CK9 style torch, very basic. Let me just take my gear apart so I can show you what I'm using on the inside. All I'm using is a very simple 332 gas lens or gas screen. Uh, nothing wild about this one. There's a wedge inner collet sleeve on the inside. I love those ones. My back cap is by Shea Spec. What up, Shea Spec? Thank you for that. That's awesome. This tungsten is a 332 CK Worldwide laser tungsten. Go to their website and buy these tungstens. If you do any kind of fine TIG welding, get these tungstens. They're awesome. They're very, very slick to use as stainless steel. I love them. But uh, yeah, what else I'm going to add to the equation here? Shout out to Edge Welding Company. Edge makes super nice stuff. Basically what they do is they send you these little adapters, just thread onto an existing gas lens that you already have, so you don't have to buy any extra lenses or anything weird on the inside. And then your cup slides over these two little O-rings. Set my stick out distance somewhere around there. We're ready to rock. There's the paintbrush right there. So that's what I'm using for gear. So we're running about uh, 25 CFH through the gas regulator. That's my working pressure. 100 amps on the machine. We're using a number 15 cup. And uh, that's about it. Let's get into it. So as you can see, I'm a piece of stainless steel here. This is 304 stainless steel. We are using a 316, 316, stone cold 316 TIG rod. Uh, this is 1 16th thick. But as you can see on my coupon here, this has uh, been carved. Uh, with a little scribe line so I can kind of see the basic width of the weld path that I want. I'm going to hit it with some acetone right now. We'll clean it up real quick. I'm going to clean up the TIG rod as well with the acetone and just uh, make sure everything's nice and clean. And then, yeah, let's just run a weave and see how it goes.
All right, stop and take a look at the first half here. All right, so first half looks pretty good, nice and shiny. Everything stayed nice and gold, which is kind of the goal of what we want to do, gold. But yeah, overall, everything looked pretty good. I uh, stayed within the lines just like I wanted to. So yeah, let's finish up the second half and then we'll take a look at it uh, all as one pass after. All right, let's wrap it up and take a look. Okay, so there we go. It turned out pretty good. Uh, we'll go through a little bit of the coloring process here. So the first thing that happened is for the most part, like I said, our first pass stayed nice and gold. Gold is good, we love gold. Gold means there's no oxide formed on there and everything stayed pretty controlled just until the end. The reason that that happened was the plate was screaming hot by the time I got to the end. So obviously we're using a little piece of a coupon here. This is three inches by about, I don't even think it's six inches, probably about five inches or so. So it's a small piece of plate. It's gonna be kind of hard to keep it uh, controlled. I could have ran more uh, post flow uh, to make sure that it stayed super gold, but regardless, it did not chalk up. It did not have any soot or any super overly oxidized stuff. There's just a little bit of blue and purple at the end when it was super, super hot. So overall, it did turn out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. The size of my weld was pretty good. I was pretty happy with the width of it the whole way. Uh, you can see my torch angle was off slightly simply because the heat affected zone was a little bit more even on this side and a little bit more in and out on that side there. But that was just a little bit of technique. I could have leaned over a little more. Overall, the edge of the puddle itself stayed pretty straight. The wetted edge stayed pretty straight. I'm pretty happy about that. Um, and in between the lines, you can kind of see the end of the lines there. Uh, we stayed pretty much right in between those parameters of the size of the weld that we wanted. So overall, I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously the end there kind of bugs me, but that's all good. We we're just doing a demo in my welding studio for YouTube, so we're not gonna stress about it too much. This one was just fun. And uh, as you can see, the weld pattern uh, compared to like my art pieces and stuff was relatively square. Everything moved across the line pretty well. We don't have any diagonal movements. Uh, the diagonal movement did not allow for the center to sink. If I was gonna get picky, I would probably tighten this pattern up a little bit to have each dab a little bit closer to its neighbor there. But uh, overall, like I said, for YouTube demo, this is pretty fun. It turned out pretty good. Colors turned out nice. I'm pretty happy with that. So I hope that helped. Uh, this one was a lot of fun. I just dropped there. I just like to goof around with settings, different things like that, and just try and do as good of a job as I can under pressure on camera. <laughs> but anyway, it's just fun to challenge myself to do a demo and try and do something as perfect as possible. Uh, obviously it doesn't always turn out perfect, but that's all good. That's what we do here, we just have fun. So before I sign off, make sure you follow me on Instagram. Instagram handle is right there. If you have any requests for things you'd like to see, stainless steel, aluminum, doesn't matter. I love hearing what people would like to do as far as uh, episode ideas, so feel free to hit me up on there if you have a cool episode, I might get around to doing it. As well, do you want to learn how to TIG weld? I teach people how to TIG weld and I do it online from distance. 
This is something I've been working on for a long time. Uh, obviously with the pandemic going down, this actually worked out to kind of be pretty convenient for a lot of people because not a lot of people can go to school right now. And I've been working with students online by distance and it's going really, really well. My students are doing really, really good with the course so far. I'm having a blast. I'm learning a lot about how to teach people and help people better. So if you're interested, go to my website. My website is right there, pacificarctigwelding.com. Uh, you can hit me up with an email. I'll kind of ask you a few questions about what you're looking to achieve with welding uh, and we'll kind of see where you're at and we'll go from there. As well as my online program, I have a TIG welding blog. I blog about the TIG welding projects I'm working on here, uh, my art pieces more specifically. Uh, as well as that, I have all my art pieces photographed well and put on there as an image galleries. Again, bounce on over to the website. Even, you just, even if you just want to say what's up, that's cool. Uh, but regardless, everybody that watches these videos, I appreciate it very, very much. So a challenge I issue at the end of every episode every week is a random act of kindness. Get out there. Uh, if you see an old man struggling across the street, help him out. Um, write something nice on a stranger's Instagram profile. Just do something nice for a stranger today. We can use as much positivity as possible in the world today, especially online. Let's do it. Uh, just do your part uh, in the name of what you watched here today. If you appreciate what I did, I would appreciate it if you did something nice for a stranger. So again, thank you so much for watching the video today. I always have a ton of fun doing these episodes and I appreciate everybody that watches all the way to the end. So to everybody that's watching, I hope you're doing good out there. I'm thinking about you. Have a good one. Peace.